Imagine a day in our Rust world where we can go to the outpost and we can purchase a different type of a supply signal, which then gives us the ability to airdrop in our own vehicles. Well, today is exactly that day. Welcome to Vehicle Airdrops by Nicodemus. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rust Admin Academy, where I teach you guys the very best tips and tricks to owning and operating a successful Rust server. On this channel, I do plug interviews, tutorials, plus I wanna show you all of the different tips and tricks that there are to having a successful Rust server. So if you're brand new to the channel, consider subscribing so that you stay up to date on everything that we're working on. All right, here we are at another masterpiece by Nicodemus. I've been playing around with this plugin for quite a few weeks now, and I'm finally ready to tell you guys all about it. So as you can see on my screen, Vehicle Airdrops is a premium plugin, and it's only available from loan.design. Link in the video description down below. First of all, before we get into the details of how this plugin actually works, I want to show you exactly what it does. So you can go to the outpost. You can go to this dedicated vending machine that the plugin actually inserts into the game for you. You can go into the vending machine just like you would any other, and you can use the currency. By default, this is set up as scrap, and you can purchase each one of these different airdrops. You'll notice that the skin for the airdrop is actually a little bit different from what you're used to seeing, but that's so that you can differentiate between regular supply drops and vehicle airdrops. Once you've purchased whichever vehicle it is that you want to deploy, you go out into the world and you throw it just like you would any other supply signal. Of course, then a supply plane is going to fly across the screen and it's going to drop a supply like you would normally see. It's going to be hanging from a parachute, but instead of a crate being there, it's going to be whatever vehicle it is that you chose. Side note, you can also purchase your very own locked crate. A word to the wise, the Scrap Transport Heli has the same characteristics as it does in game. If you let the helicopter land on you, it's going to kill you. So if you've never purchased anything from Loan.Design before, the process is a little bit different from what you might be used to. Of course, you go in, you add it to your cart, and then you go pay for your purchase. After the purchase is actually complete, you head over to your downloads page, and then you can download the file like you normally would. Now, as is with most plugins that come from Nicodemus, they come in a zipped folder, so you just want to unzip that. You want to to extract it to a location on your computer and then you want to take the vehicle airdrops.cs file and drop it into your plugins folder like you would any other plugin if you have plugin watchers turned on of course it's automatically going to compile and then the plugin is ready to go if you have plugin watchers turned off of course you're going to have to do a reload on the plugin even though that it is the first time you're installing this plugin and o dot reload vehicle airdrops is the command for that and as long as everything compiles correctly you're going to end up with a file called vehicle airdrops.json which is your configuration file which will of course be in your configuration folder. If we go in and have a look at the configuration file, yes, of course, we can configure all of the different details of the plugin. However, I'm going to show you a much easier way. So because Nicodemus is such a gentleman and such a scholar, he made us a very fancy GUI where we can do all of our configuration directly in game. So anybody that has owner ID or moderator ID access on your server will automatically have access to this GUI. But if you have a group of admins on your server that don't have either one of those associations, you would have to, of course, grant them that permission. So let's open up our permissions manager slash perms group admin or whatever name it is that you call your admins that don't have owner ID or moderator ID. So we go into vehicle airdrops and of course we can grant this admin permission which is going to grant them access to this GUI that we're going to use in just a second. So to get access to the GUI in chat you're going to do slash VA GUI and that's going to bring up this beautiful work of art. Can you guys see everything? All right so I know you guys can't see that bottom line there because my silly graphic is over top of it. We'll, we'll get into that in just a second. So this is where you can configure every single detail about this plugin you don't have to do it manually in the configuration file at all when you first pull up the GUI you're going to be greeted with this page right here which is basically just the parameters for the entire plugin now some of these are fairly obvious I'm not going to go over every single detail in this plugin because there are a lot of them once you get this onto your own server do some exploring do some testing and you're going to see how simple everything is so cargo plane event chance of custom drop so what that means is the plugin will actually take over the random supply drops that automatically happen in your server as it stands right now now, and you can define what the potential chance of converting that into a custom vehicle airdrop is instead of a regular supply drop. By default, this is set to 50%. You can change it to whatever works best for your server. If you wanted it to be 100%, just put in 100% there. As soon as you hit enter, you're, you're going to see that it updates on the GUI. So this section right here is actually quite interesting. What this does is it allows you to lock that custom supply signal to whoever called it in. Called supply drops are private. Anyone can access the called supply drops, and it just toggles back and forth. Private drops are for 
are caller only. Private drops include teammates. So then you get to define how long it's actually protected from somebody else coming along and stealing whatever it was that they dropped. By default, this is set to 60 seconds. You can make it higher or lower. Cannot access drops while they're dropping, which means people can't fly up to it in a minicopter and try and snag it out of the sky while it's still falling. Cannot cause damage to the supply drop so people on the ground can't shoot at it and destroy the parachute or cause it damage as it's coming down in the case of a vehicle. And damage doesn't remove the parachute. So we can toggle all of these things on or off whatever suits our server. And then we can also define decay. So once this supply hits the ground, do we want it to start decaying right away or not? We can toggle that on or off. By default, this is set to false. Therefore, the vehicle will not decay if we wanted it to start decaying just toggle that on just like that. And then of course the falling speed. How quickly do we want it to fall out of the sky like a regular supply drop? So by default, this is set to one, which is the regular speed that Rust naturally uses. You of course can increase that speed or decrease that speed, whatever works best for you. Again, same thing. As soon as you change a variable, you hit enter. The GUI automatically updates that value. So now as you can see there, it says that my drop speed is five. Now the line that you can't see because it's behind my overlay is position inaccuracy. What that means is how close to the actual supply drop that is thrown by the player do you actually want the crate or vehicle or whatever it is that they're calling in to actually land where they threw the supply signal by default this is set to 20 meters so within 20 meters of where they actually threw that supply signal that's where that item is going to drop so now if we go into the shop config which is the option above the default one that you're going to get when you first open this gui is where we get to define other factors about this plugin do you want to have a vending machine at the outpost that sells these items if not there is a chat command that we can use we're going to get into that in just a minute what do you want to call it we can change that name to whatever we want it to be change it to custom airdrops hit enter and it automatically changes that i'll show you that once we actually go over to the outposts restock the machine every 60 minutes vending machine position and rotations are relative to the outpost if you don't want this at the outpost you can change the location of it using the xyz parameters i'm going to leave it relative to outpost the vending machine position and rotation i'm going to show you a little bit about that once we actually get over to the outpost the enable VA buy chat command, which is an alternative way of buying these supply signals without actually having to go to the outpost. So in chat, we do slash VA buy. That's going to bring up this little chat response, which tells you the different things that they can buy without having to go to the outpost. This is all configurable as well as what is being sold at the vending machine at the outpost is also configurable. You don't have to have all of the different supply signals on this chat command, and you also don't have to have all of the supply signals at the vending machine. And then the last option on the G UI is what type of currency do we want our players to be able to use to purchase these different supply signals? If we just leave it at currency, that default is scrap. You of course can change that to whatever it is that you want it to be. It can be blood, it can be wood, it can be stones, it could be literally whatever in the game you want it to be, you can change that. So the options are currency, server rewards, and of course economics. So if you run an economic system on your server, you can make it so the players have to earn money before they can actually purchase any of these supply signals. So if we go into the the normal drop page. This is where you get to decide where these different items are able to be purchased from. So as you can see here, this one is available in the vending machine, but it's not available through the chat command. If we want to change that, we can just click on both of those and we can alternate back and forth and we can make it available in both if we wanted to. Down here, we get to decide how much it actually costs to purchase one of these. This is the normal supply drop. So if we're sticking with currency, which by default is scrap, it would cost 400 scrap in order to buy a regular supply signal. If we were using a server reward, by default, it's set up to four server rewards. If we were using economics, it would be 400 dollars or whatever you want to call your economic system and this is where we get to change what in-game item we want to use as currency instead of scrap so for example if we wanted to change our currency to stones instead of scrap i would head over to corrosion hour i would grab this item id right here and then we can just simply post it in that new item id in that location hit enter and you're going to see that it updates right on the gui so now this regular supply drop is going to cost 400 stones instead of 400 scrap if you wanted to apply a permission so that maybe only only VIPs or maybe only verified Discord members can actually purchase these items, we would put that permission in here. And then of course, make sure you go in and actually grant that permission to the right group of people so that it actually works. Let's hop down to the mini copter section because there is a little bit of repetition here and I can just go over one of these and you're gonna have a good idea of how they all work. The one exception to that, of course, is modular vehicles, which we're gonna go into a little bit more detail. So of course, same thing as before, how much do we want it to cost to actually purchase a mini helicopter? What kind of currency do we want them to be 
able to use? Is there a permission associated with this? Chances of this type of custom supply drop landing in loot crates or cargo plane events. By default, this is set to one in 10 or one in four for the cargo plane event. How much fuel do we want to have in the tank when it lands? And of course, what is the vehicle health of the mini copter? Do we want it to have when it actually hits the ground? By default, this is set to 100. Let's say we change this to 50 for argument's sake. At the top, we get to decide where we want this custom supply drop to be able to be purchased, whether it's only in the chat command or if it's only in the vending machine, same as I showed you before. We can change this to whatever it is that we want it to be, whatever works best for your server. Now, the mini copter, the scrap heli, the rowboat, the rib, the solo sub, the duo sub, and both snowmobiles have all of those exact same parameters on them. This is what I'm talking about with the repetition. I'm not going to go over each one of these details because the options are exactly the same. The one caveat to that is the modular car. Now, the modular car is a little bit different because we need to define what are the chances of it actually landing with specific engine parts in it. So as you can see here, the top section is very similar to everything else that we've already seen so far, but you'll see this new yellow bar down here, edit chances of modular cars engine to spawn with components. Can you guys see that? Yes, my head is almost covering it. So if we go in there, you can actually see what the default values are for each individual engine type, as well as each different engine component. And we can define what the percentages are of each one of these components spawning in a modular vehicle as it lands for that player. So let's just deal with the crankshaft section right here. So the chances of a low quality crankshaft spawning in this vehicle is 25%. The chances of a medium quality crankshaft spawning in this vehicle is also 25%. So these are all the percentages of a chance of it spawning with that level of item. So if we wanted to change this up a little bit, let's say there's a 10% chance that it spawns with a low quality one, a 20% chance that it spawns with a medium quality one, and a 50% chance that it spawns with a high quality crankshaft. So as you can see there, it automatically updated those values on the GUI. And now it says at the end here, out of 80. And that's because we haven't actually made a percentage of change chance that it might spawn with no crankshaft at all. So in this red box right here, we could fill that in with whatever percentage we want it to be. But let's make it 20 so that it rounds out at an even 100. And this exact same process can be done with all of the components that naturally spawn in one of these engines. Obviously, pay attention to which ones are big V8 engines only. But this grid on the right hand side here works the exact same for each different component. Now at the top of the GUI here, you're going to see a section where you get to define the percentage of chance of the different sizes of chance chassis that actually spawn with a custom supply drop. By default, these are all set to 33% chance. So, so there's a one in three chance that this vehicle is going to end up with one of these different sizes of chassis that drop. Let's say we wanted to increase the possibility that it's actually going to be a four module chassis that drops. We can change this to 25. We'll change this other one to 25 and we can change the third one to 50% chance. So as you can see there, it automatically updated all of those values. So there's a 50% chance that if I called in a modular vehicle, custom supply drop that it's going to come with four different module spots. Okay, I had to go back and actually clarify a section of this video because I think I wasn't clear about it when I was telling you about it earlier. So the plugin has the ability of taking over the naturally occurring events of the supply drops that happen at various times throughout your server. We can disable that by toggling this off to false. That'll make it so that your regular timed airdrops that naturally happen in your server are just a regular supply drop like normal. If we set this to true, we can define a percentage of whether the plugin is actually going to take over and control that supply drop and make it a custom supply drop or whether it's going to be a regular supply drop that you would normally see. By default, this is 50% chance. So I'm going to change that back to 50%. I had it set to 100. And then we can do the exact same thing for the customer toss supply drops that come in. So I think this is naturally set to 50%. I'm going to change that back to 50%. So now there's a 50% chance that the plugin is going to take over when a player tosses a supply signal as to whether it's going to be a regular supply signal or a custom supply signal. Part that I don't really understand there is why why there's no loot table for that. So once you have everything set up the way you want it to be in your GUI, you can actually go in game and in chat and you can start testing this out. So let's do slash VA buy and it's going to bring up this chat menu that tells us what we can buy and how much it's going to cost. But we also set it up so that we could purchase directly from the vending machine at the outpost. So let's quickly zip over to the outpost and we can zoom around the corner here and we can see a new vending machine that we probably haven't seen before. And don't worry about what you see on the screen here. Those are just 
the items that are behind the plugin. Once you actually go into the vending machine, they actually look like the supply signals that you would expect. So we can buy the rowboat, the rib, the mini heli, a car, or the scrap transport heli, or of course, a locked crate. And as you can see, because of that change that we made earlier, I can actually buy a supply signal with 400 stone instead of 400 scrap. So as you can see, you can change the currency for each individual item if you so chose. So let's just purchase up a modular car as well as, I don't know, let's do a rib. So as you can see, I have these supply signals that have the little icon next to it, which shows me what that item is going to call in. While we're here and before I actually deploy these supply signals, though, I wanted to show you something about the actual positioning of the vending machine wherever you happen to be using it. The GUI actually has control over where this vending machine is actually positioned. So we can go into the shop config top left hand corner there and we can actually change the position or the rotation of the vending machine where it sits. As you've seen it on my screen behind the GUI before I brought the GUI back up, it naturally spawned in a position a little bit too far to the left. So I actually moved it to the right a little bit by changing this variable right here. So if I didn't like where it is as far as up and down goes, I can change the height of where it actually spawns simply by changing this middle variable right here. So I'm going to change it from the 1.49 that it currently is to a five. And you're going to see that it actually destroys the old vending machine and puts another one up above it. Well, of course, that's obviously not ideal. So let's go back and change that. So we're just going to change that back to the 1.49 that it was before. You're going to see on my screen there, it's actually going to destroy the one that's up above and put it back down below like where it's supposed to be. And of course, once we actually have those items in our inventory, we can leave the outpost because you can't deploy these at the outpost. And we just throw them like we would any other supply signal. And because I changed the speed of the airplane that flies across as well as the drop speed of the actual item itself, it's going to happen very, very quickly. So let's just keep an eye on the sky. We'll see what happens. So there's the first plane dropped an item. There's the second plane dropped another item. And like I said, they're both going to drop very, very quickly. So there's the rib that we purchased. And of course, there's the modular car with what looks like three different modular slots. So of course, everything is working exactly like I would expect it to, because I mean, let's face it, Nicodemus doesn't put out broken plugins. So everything is very configurable. You can change the features of each individual custom supply drop. You can apply permissions to certain supply drops and not to the other ones. It's very configurable. And just for full disclosure, if you do decide that you want to do it the hard way, all of those changes that we made using the GUI updates live on the actual configuration file. So if you want to go back in and change something in the configuration file, you can definitely do that. It works both ways. But if you do make changes on the configuration file, make sure, of course, you remember to save that and then reload the plugin so that it grabs that new information. All right, so that basically does it for vehicle airdrops by Nicodemus. If you want to see more videos that I've done on Nicodemus's plugins, of course, click on this playlist right here. And if you haven't even started yet on your Rust server, you want to check out this playlist right here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, you have to leave me a comment and you have to smash that like button for me.